Hi, good morning, welcome to Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained, Lecture 13. <coughs> Excuse me. First, a quick uh, uh, clarification from last week. We spoke about the shofar. The main and most important uh, kavana intention when we hear the shofar in Rosh Hashanah is very simple and most important. And that's the halacha. That we are fulfilling a commandment of God through listening to the shofar. Uh, hopefully, uh, in the near future, I'll give another class on, I'll give a class on the holidays. Kabbalah Chassidus explained about the upcoming holidays. But now we're going to continue from last week. So last week, uh, that's uh, class 12. Class 9, 10, and 11, we spoke about the essence of God Almighty. And class 12, last class, we spoke about um, uh, the infinite light, which we said that we have to take out of our mind any physical idea of light. Really, it's just an infinite energy that emanates from God Almighty. The say we brought the Chassidus brings a, a example, several examples. One of them is from the sun, that the sun is a very powerful uh, uh, source of light itself. It's a very extreme uh, uh, energy of light, light, energy, warmth, you know, solar energy. So therefore, automatically, light emanates from it. Now we know that to understand something, it's easier to understand it when you, when you put something else in contrast. When you put something different in contrast, you understand it much better. For instance, if you, ha or you see it, it's noticeable and it's clearer. For instance, simple thing, yeah? You have a white paper and you have a black dot. Right away you see the black dot. Or you have a white shirt and there's a black, uh, black stain. What if you have a gray suit and you have a black stain? It's hardly noticeable. The contrast makes it clear. So, <clears throat> Chassidus, at length, in many places, explains the difference between Eir and Shefa. Eir and Shefa. So, Eir is light, and Shefa is like a, also like a flow of energy. So, generally speaking, the Mekobolim, the Kabbalists, when they describe a, a, uh, a divine power, strength, a sphere, etc., they, they describe it usually in the way of Eir, which is light. But the Chaykrim, the Jewish philosophers, of the great Jewish philosophers, the Gdeli the, the Yisrael, when they describe uh, divine energy, they describe it they write it with the word Shefa, which is uh, a flow of energy. What's the difference? Achsidus goes at length explaining the difference, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to be learning from the Maimer, Zeis Chukas, Tofesh Samach Vav. I'm not going to go through the pages. I'm not going to tell you which page. It's just, uh, I'll just tell you. It starts at page... 2.30. The, the new print starts at page 230. But we're going to go little pieces here and there. Mostly I'm going to go just the English. I'm not going to give much Hebrew. Um, it's explained in many other places. As in the new print of Samach Vav, you have a lot of uh, referrals. Uh, where other places, references, I'm sorry. Other references of where uh, many other places that this is explained. This is a famous topic. Okay. And this gives us a clarity of Eid and Saf of the infinite light, the infinite energy that emanates from Hashem. So, Shefa. First, we'll talk about Shefa. That's the way it starts in, in Chukas and Machbav. <clears throat> he brings a Pasuk, Shefa Yamim. From Zaysa uh, Bracha, the last parsha in the Torah, and Dvarim. 3319 Shefa Yamim the the oceans Shefa Yamim or there's another pasuk Shifas Mayim 
the flow of water. Eev, Job 22.11 and 38.34. So, so we connect the, uh, 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 a flow of energy to water. Why? So this is the concept. Because when water flows from one place to another, you have the actual water that goes from one place to another. And actually, in, in the way it's in the water, it's, 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 it's act, it gives you a, 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 um, an, a, an actual part of the water. There's less where it came from, and there's more where it's coming to. The actual water comes. Okay. A, a more of a spiritual, of a, uh, of a spiritual concept of Shefa is at length explained a teacher and a student. When a teacher shares a concept in his mind to a student. Yeah? It's also called Shafa. And the point is, He gives him an actual significance of Seichel. A, an actual substance. In other words, by the sun and the light, it's only a ray of the light. The sun stays millions of miles away. What we get is only a ray. But the seichel, the actual, the, the teacher, the rav, the teacher gives part of his understanding to the student. There's an actual substance of intellect that he gives him. Therefore, since he gives him substance, therefore the student has this in his mind and it stays by him. You cannot take a piece of light, sunlight, and hide it. It doesn't work, right? Because it has no substance. I will explain soon. But when a, when a teacher teaches a student, the student has it in his mind. Even after he the teacher stopped teaching, even when the teacher left, for years ahead, this uh, idea stays, this intellectual idea and concept stays in the student's mind. Not just that, but he could take it further and, and, and deepen his mind into it and find deeper, uh, deeper layers to it and have vitality in it, life and, and, and energy with this intellect that the teacher taught him. Why? Because he, the teacher gave him something of real substance and therefore it's, it could stay forever. If the, if the student has a good memory or if he repeats it, he doesn't even have to write it down. If he writes it down, but even if he doesn't, if he repeats it in his memory, this, this could stay with him forever because the, the teacher gave him something of substance. Since, the teach, since this, is a she, this is a concept of Shefa, he gives him something of substance, therefore he has to actually do something to give it to him. He has to teach it to him. It's not going to happen automatically. The sun, the, ray, the light of the sun comes out automatically. But the teacher cannot work automatically. He has to actually teach it and explain it. And he is... Fixed. When he explains it, he's tied down and fixed to this. He cannot think of anything else at that time. For sure he cannot teach anything else at the same time. Because he is fixed into this, he's grounded and fixed and tied down to this. And limited to it, really. And it makes a change in the teacher also. The, the Talmud in, in Gemara Tainus 7a says like this I think it goes like this because he doesn't quote the whole quote but it's a very nice quote so I'm just gonna, I think according to my memory I didn't look it up unfortunately um, it goes like this I believe um, I learned a lot from my teachers more from my friends and for my students more than everyone else. <laughs> 
And this is what he quotes here. For my students, I learned more than all, everyone else. This is a very nice uh, concept, very nice quote. What does it mean? So sometimes if you have a brilliant student and the student asks you questions and challenges you, it, you know, it sharpens your mind and it sharpens your own understanding. That's one thing. But then there's something else. The very fact that a person explains something and teaches something, it always becomes more clear, clarified by the person himself. Just by teaching it, it becomes clarified. And sometimes when you teach, you can even think, ah, I didn't think of this point. It, 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 sharp, it, it sharpens the concept in your own mind. And sometimes you can even, it doesn't say that here, but uh, it says like this. Through teaching your students, there's more seichel that's added, more intellect is added to the teacher, as known. Okay? So that's, that's a clear thing, right? Okay. If a person does not teach at all, stop teaching. He used to teach, he stopped teaching. So he's going to decline. His logical decline, his whatever, his his way of understanding things will decline because he's not teaching them. So it does make a difference. It doesn't say this here, but I'm going to tell you another difference. When a person teaches for an hour, two hours, he gets tired. It makes another difference. And then there's something else. The teacher we're talking about a, a teacher and a student, which are far apart. So the teacher cannot just teach it the way it's in his, the way he understands it, or or an adult teaches a child. You cannot you cannot just say oh you say the same words that you would tell an adult. No, you have to try to see that the child or the, t the young teenager should understand it. You you have to find words, parables, and words to put it in. Uh, this concept to put the concept in so that the teacher should, so that the child should uh, understand it. That's why. He says you have two types of people. A genius is one thing, but then there's a bar pale, a bal pale, to see that the, ch that the student should understand. That's a special talent some geniuses don't have. A teacher has to be able to take the concept that he has and sort of change it. You're giving the same concept, but you're putting it into the words that the, that the student can understand. That's a special talent. So it takes a lot of effort for the, for the teacher. He can't just say it the way he understands it. He has to explain it in a way that the student could understand it, in different words. So there's a major difference that occurs in the teacher. He has to really generate this, this, this teaching, he has to really put himself into it, really get involved and think hard, and it's exhausting. Not just that, but the teaching itself changes. Right? The way it's by him, the way this concept is in his own mind, the teacher's mind, the student cannot understand that. He has to give it in his words so that the teaching changes in a way that the student can understand. So there's a change in the teacher and in the teaching. Major change in the teacher. All this is why, because the teacher is giving him something of substance. He's giving him an actual substance of intellect, of logic, of a certain concept that was in his mind and is trying to implant it in the student's mind. The teacher to explain it. Therefore, he's involved, the teacher has to be involved and caught up with it, and it makes a difference to him. It, makes a, it, 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 it changes him. He becomes tired. That's Shefa. Since he gives him substance, he gives him really something, so he has to actually give it to him, and it takes time and effort and energy. And, and it makes this change in, in the teacher. Now just to mention, this concept of Shefa is also mentioned a little bit in Kabbalah. 
uh, let's say a little bit, it says also you find in Etzchaim he also mentions the word Shefa. It's because the lower levels of divine energy that enclose in the, in, in the world is, is in a way of Shefa. We're not going to explain this now. However, the divine energy that's above the level of the world, that's in a way of Eir. Okay, just mentioning that. So this is Shefa. Not verse, verses to that is Eir. Contrast to that is Eir is light. What's light? Light is a Arlava, that's the key. It's only a ray. A ray, a ray of light. In Russian it's called Luch. Da? In Russian it's called Luch. It's only a ray. Ray, R-A-Y. It's nothing, it's nothing of substance. Similar to the sun, the light of the sun. What's the light of the sun? It's only a ray. The sun itself is not, is not in the world. We couldn't handle it. We'll burn up, God forbid. What do we have? We only have a ray of the sun. But the sun itself is not here at all. The essence, the source is not here. We have nothing of the source. Only a ray of the source. Although we explained last week that the light of the sun is called me'ain ha'etzem. It's, it's, it's hard to, I don't know how to translate me'ain. It's of the, of the essence, similar to the essence, meaning the etzem ha'shemesh, the etzem ha'shemesh since the sun itself is a extraordinary existence of light, therefore, automatically, light comes out from it, so the light is what? Is an expression, an extension, so to speak, a spashtus. A, a, uh, an extension. Of the sun. Extension is a little bit... I mean, the sun itself is not extended. But its light is extended. It's an expression of the sun. Since the sun is a powerful source of light, automatically the light comes out of it. Nevertheless, the light of the sun has none of the actual essence of the sun at all. The actual sun is millions of miles away. And the light of the sun comes out effortless, you could say automatically. But remember, we're going to say again soon, but it's not... Okay, by the sun it's automatically, totally automatically. I'm sorry. So by the sun it's totally automatically. Therefore, the sun is not involved in making an effort to shine the light. There's no effort to the sun. It's totally effortless. It comes out automatically. Okay? It's a different, big major difference. Therefore, the light does not make any difference in the source of light in the sun. Does the sun really care if it's cloudy or not? Does it make a difference to the sun? By the teacher, we said if he teaches, he, 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 his mind sharpens. By the light of the sun, if the sun, if the light reaches us, the sun becomes uh, more light. It, becomes, it makes no difference. Or if you put a, a window shade, or uh, if it's very cloudy, does it make any, any, does it take away anything from the sun? If the teacher does not teach, he becomes a little rusty. But if the sun, if it's very, very, it's very cloudy, so what? So the sun becomes weaker? No, there's not, nothing to do. It makes no change whatsoever. Why? Because it's only a ray of the sun. It's only her other levad. Tolka luch. At so and so. You understand? Understood? There's another thing about the sun light of the sun that that uh, it does many things at the same time 
The teacher cannot do many things at the same time. While he teaches this student or this class, he must be totally focused on this. He cannot do anything else. But the sun does many things at one time. It gives, it gives light, it gives heat, it makes things grow. Today we have solar energy. All these things at once. Why? Because it's not involved, it's not fixed and tied down to, to, the, to the ray. The ray comes out automatically. However, we mentioned, I believe, last week, we're going to mention again here, he says it here again. We have to remember there's a major difference between the sun and the light of the sun and the way it's by God Almighty. The sun has no choice to light, to, to, to send light or not to send light. It's automatic, but it's, it, it cannot take its light back. It's a, ro it's a robot, whatever. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't have the... It does not have a, uh, right, just to mention quickly, the, the mistake of, 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 of idol worshippers were that they thought that the sun has some power. The sun is a robot in the hands of God. Without the sun, there would be no life on earth. But it's a robot, it's a, like a hammer in the hand of the master, of the craftsman. Okay. So the sun has no choice to, to send its light or not to send its light. By Hashem, there's no such thing. God Almighty, there's no such thing. There's no choice. So if he wants, he could withdraw the light whenever. So, the basic differences we spoke about was that by a light, by air, it's only a ray. But by Shefa, by the teacher, he's actually giving him substance. Therefore, since it's only a ray, the, he's totally, it just comes out automatically. He has no, it's totally effortless. But by the teacher, since he's giving him substance, part of his understanding, part of his mind, part of his seichel, part of his uh, logic, he has to actually be involved and, 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 and generate this, this teaching and teach it and, and be involved and, and put it into the words of the student, etc. And therefore, by the light, there is no change whatsoever by the source of light, by the luminary, by the, by the sun, because it's automatically, it's only a ray. But by the teacher, since it's, it's called Shefa, and he actually has to teach it and get involved, so it makes a change in him. Okay, and now towards the end of this Maimur of this Chukas Samachov. So, this, uh, according to all this, will understand the weights above by Hashem, by God Almighty. Above, we don't mean above, above, physically. We mean the weights, the weights by Hashem. Right? Nothing physical. We have to keep it out, out of our mind. Uh, the, that it's called air. The energy that emanates from God Almighty is called air, light. Why? Because it's only a ray. There's nothing of the essence. And therefore, it makes no change whatsoever in the essence of God. And the essence of God is not involved, so to speak. He has to make an effort to, to, uh, to, to shine the light. No, to shine his energy. It, 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 it comes effortless. Automatically. The best way I could translate it is automatically. I'm not sure if it's totally accurate. Automatic, but remember, he always has the choice to withdraw, the, to, to take the light back. So it's not, not, he's not forced to. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so that's understood, right? That the energy that emanates from God Almighty, which is called light, why is it called light? Why is it called the infinite light? Why light? Because it's very similar to light, the light of the sun. That it, it, since it, it, it has no substance, it's only a ray of the light. Oh, I'm sorry, a ray of the sun. Therefore, it, it's, it, it's automatic. It's, an ex, it, it's automatic. And therefore, it's effortless. And therefore, it makes no change whatsoever in the source. 
So here we're constantly degrading it. We're saying it's only this, it's only a ray. It makes no change. Now we're going to tell you the, 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 the great quality of, of this light. Omnom hugilia etzem. Nevertheless, it's an expression of the essence. It's a revelation of the essence. I spoke last week. I speak again a little bit this week. It's a revelation of the essence. Shalafi eifun etzemamash, which is literally reflecting the essence. We'll explain soon. Well, this is only by air. This is only by by the concept of light, not by shafa. By shafa, it does not really express the essence. You know why? Because the teacher cannot explain, cannot teach the way it's by him. The student won't get it. The student won't understand it. He has to change the teaching. Give him the same concept, but in different words that the student should understand. It does change. It does not reflect the brilliance of the teacher. Because it's, it's only the way the student can understand. There's a special, there's a special talent to be able to explain. It's not everybody's teacher. Not every genius is a teacher. But there is a change. It does not express the, the source, really. But light, but light is the expression of the, of the essence, and it's just like the essence. Listen, therefore the light, the infinite energy of God is also infinite. What do you mean, only God is infinite? But this energy emanates and reflects him, expresses him. Whatever there is in the luminary, in the source of this energy, is in the light as well, in the energy as well that emanates from him. Because he's of the the he's similar to the to the uh, reflection of, of the source. As he mentions the same word made before by the by the sun, that since the sun is is a, 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 a awesome an awesome uh, has an awesome amount of light, therefore automatically the light comes out from it. That's Ma'ina Moir. Since God Almighty is totally infinite, therefore the energy that emanates from it is also infinite. And this is the reason why that the, this infinite energy has the power to create. This infinite light has the power to create, which is really God's power. That explained in previous Maimon of Ayelech that creation has to be from an infinite power. To create something from nothing, it's an infinite power. We cannot understand even how, it, how it's possible. Right? Not to, but it's understood. It's an infinite power. To change nothing from uh, some, uh, nothing into something. So the light, this, en this infinite energy that emanates from God, since it's in self mamish, it's literally infinite because it's me'enamoid, because it's reflecting the source, the God himself, therefore it's able to create. Now let's explain a little bit from last week. The fact that it reflects the essence. So we said, we brought to, the Chassidus brings a Pasuk from Kehelis, uh, chapter 8, verse 1. The, 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 the wisdom of, ma of a man is showing on his face. Uh, the wisdom of man shine, makes his face shine. Basically, you could see in a person, a wise person, you see it on his face. Or I, if I, I took it further, if, if, if I may, if a person is angry, you could see it on his face. If a person is upset, a person is worried. You could see there's an expression of the person's feeling, of the soul, so to speak, of the person's uh, emotions. You can see it on his face. Now, this expression of the face, what is that? Does he make these expressions? No, it's automatic. These expressions of the face have no significance besides them being an expression of the person's feeling. Understood? 
Now, there's one more point, uh, one more uh, 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 key uh, quality of light that he doesn't mention here. But it's really, it's the same idea, but it's not clearly mentioned. But I want to talk about it for a minute. And that's called dveikus. Dveikus means that the, the light cleaves to the source. Light is the only thing that always must be connected to its source. Right? If you close the window shade, the light disappears. It always must be connected all the way to the sun. Clouds, black. So, how do we explain this in, 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 in God's light? So it's not a physical thing, right? So it's explained, I see this in different places, but it's very clearly explained in the Kutis Sichis, in the Rebbe's, uh, in the Rebbe's Lekutis Sichis, uh, volume 9, page 73, on the bottom, Shulei Agilin. He said like this, Lashon Hamurgo Benigela Eir, the what we usually use to to explain the concept of light is shuhudovuk b'amoy that he's cleaved, cleaving to the to the to the source to the luminary. Why? Because the whole existence of light is only the revelation of its of its source of the luminary or an expression of the luminary, right? And this expresses itself very strongly in this, con- in this parable that Chassidus gives of the person's facial expressions. What, the facial expressions, it's, its whole existence is only to express the person's feelings. The light of the sun is different. The light of the sun, good, expresses the, the power of the sun, but it also has a mission to bring light to the world. That's what God created them, co-created it. Sun, the moon is different, but the sun, moon doesn't have its own light, as it reflects the sunlight. But the fact that Hashem created uh, the sun is to give us light. In Genesis. Uh, yeah, so so that's the purpose of its creation. So it, the, the light of the sun is also to give, not just to express its source. It has a different mission, the mission of the source, but it's, it's giving, it's, it's also going towards others. And that's its mission. But the expression of, of, of the face is only an expression of the soul, only expression of the feelings. That's all. It has no other significance whatsoever. That's the real pure concept of light. So this infinite energy that emanates, that expresses God, since it's, it's, it's His expression, so to speak, it's His revelation. As I spoke about it last week, that I allow myself to call it an expression of God. I'm saying me. It doesn't say clearly in Tchsidis the word expression in Hebrew is bitui. It doesn't say that anywhere. But since he brings this, since Tchsidis brings this parable of facial expressions, and in English it's called a facial expression, I think it gives out very clearly this concept of light, of air. So the infinite light is an expression of godliness. It's expression. Of, it's an expression of God Himself, of the essence of God. Therefore, it, it reflects it totally. Not totally. It's another uh, issue, but a lot of it is, some of it is reflected in, in, the, in, in, the, in, in the light. It's, it's infinity is reflected in the light. Right? Because all this is about creation. God is not just God. One of the things He could do, He could also create. What is He really? We don't. We, we can have no idea. We spoke about this, I think, two two classes ago. So it does not express all of Hashem, but it does express the whole lumen. Okay, listen. This is other topics are going to mix you up. So it says like this: Whatever is in the luminary is in the light also. gamkin. Whatever is in the luminary is also in the light. Right? Because the light expresses, is an expression of its source. Therefore, it could create. Nevertheless, 
the, the creation is called yesh ma'ayin, something from nothing. What do you mean from nothing? From the infinite light. What do you mean from nothing? There's no, you know why? So simply we say, yeah, the, the, the stone before creation was not here, something from nothing. But why it's created from the infinite light, why is it called nothing? So there's a different reason also. Because the infinite light relative to God Almighty Himself is nothing. Why? Two reasons. It doesn't say it here, but this is the way I always understood it. And it probably says it in different places. I mean, we just learned this, but I believe that's why it's nothing. One thing is simply because it's existence. There's no existence of light without its source. So the light on its own is nothing. The only reason there's a light is because the, sh- the sun is shining. It's because God Almighty is emanating the light. On its own, it's nothing. It has no self-existence at all. That's relative to its existence. Also relative to its essence. What is the essence of the light? Just to express its, its source. On its own, it has no essence. So relative to God Almighty, the infinite light is nothing. It's literally nothing relative to God Himself. So what do we have? Now we can finally make this practical. We have two meditations that we could use when we pray to, to Hashem. Before we pray, it says in Shulchan Aruch, we should think of the greatness of God and the smallness of man. So we have two things here. One thing is, right, you read it in in, 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 in uh, Baruch David, Hashem created all the world, uh, the, the whole world, all the creatures, and in the halalukas, and all the birds, and plants, and the, on, 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 on the earth, in the waters, billions, millions, and trillions of creatures, and trillions of, of, of stars, amazing, right? It is amazing. Well, just think about it for a moment. Comes Chassidus and says, that such an amazing cosmos that Hashem created made no change in him. You can't say, oh, he became tired, such a hard job. No! It's all through the light, which makes no change in the essence. God Almighty is so awesome, so great, that this great creation made zero change in him. We say this every, every day. It's a little bit similar concept. We say every day, every morning, after the small Shema in the morning, before, before uh, how you do, we say, You are the same one before creation, you are the same one after creation. No change. And there's a Pasuk, I am God that don't, doesn't change. That's one thing. Another thing, it says in, in Zohar, famous, the, the Kula Kameka, nothing else besides God. Kula Kameka Lachashiv, everything. Everything relative to God is like nothing. What do you mean? It's a massive world. Now, by the way, we're just talking about our physical world. There are also many other worlds, spiritual worlds, which eventually we're going to get to. Why is it all, it's all nothing? Because it's all created by the ray of Hashem, which relative to Hashem is nothing. Now let's just remember... Eventually, remember I spoke to you in the last class that this is a, it's a, it's a great revelation of the Alter Rebbe. This concept is a great revelation of the Alter Rebbe based on the Arizal. And there's this ancient Kabbalist that had challenges with different concepts and this, con- this explanation of light explains everything. But it's, it's a little complicated, it's more complicated than I'm that I'll explain it in the future. But I just want to explain one little thing connected with that. We have to understand this. The, the only reason why the infinite light could create and the infinite light is infinite is because it gets it from, from its source, from God Himself. It's an extension, so it's an expression of God Himself. Okay? Uh, that's clear. Okay, understood? Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you for listening online. We're on this great journey. Believe at the next class it will be uh, on the holidays, and afterwards we're going to discuss the great concept of the Arizal that revealed to us the concept of Tzimtzum. 
which is a fascinating uh, the contraction of the infinite light to create the world which is a, which is a fascinating concept I hope you're inspired. Every class takes many hours to prepare to support our classes and our vital outreach programs. Please log on to ChabadKingsborough.org and click on Donate. Thank you. If you like the class, please click on the, on the Like button. Please click on the Subscribe button to subscribe to our classes. Remember to leave a comment. If you want to email me, it's RabbiZaltzman at AOL.com. Uh, write something in the subject line, something about the Kabbalah Chassidus classes. Uh, Kabbalah has explained Rabbi Zaltzman Rabbi Z-A-L-T-Z-M-A-N at AOL.com thanks you for listening and all the best have a good and sweet year